Yo ho everybody and welcome to another edition of Yinzer on Hockey. So today I wanted to take a look at probably the most talked about debate um, for the draft. And for me, I, I think the biggest coin flip in this draft, and it could change the the, the draft landscape going forward depending on how this this pick falls and that's the number three pick in the draft um, I've seen a few uh, mock drafts that has Brady Kachuk going number three and a few draft picks a few mock drafts that have Philip Zadina going number three and I wanted to take a look at these two players and give my opinion on how I think the pick could play out um, from the Montreal Canadiens point of view. Now, um, for their career, Brady Kachuk, 18 years old, uh, currently plays for the University of Boston, um, and he's uh, spoke at length about playing for David Quinn and his system and how he, he really enjoys playing for David Quinn. And, well, I mean, not that that has anything to do with anything, but I think that that goes to say, you know, what kind of coach Brady, uh, David Quinn's going to be for the New York Rangers. Um, this year at Boston, in 40 games played, uh, Kachuk had 8 goals and 23 assists for a total of 31 points. And that's been a recurring theme throughout his uh, maturation process is he's been more of a... A playmaking winger. He's been able to to find the open guy, and he, he gets a lot of assists from the wing position, which is um, a level of versatility that you don't um, get a lot of from from wingers. Uh, Philip Zadina this past season um, for the Halifax Mooseheads in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League had. 44 goals, 38 assists for 82 points in 57 games. Um, Philip Zadina is a goal-scoring machine. He has a knack for finding the back of the net. Um, and, and that's been kind of repetitive through his uh, maturation process. Uh, so, you know, you get different... Um, you, you get different value for for each player, and I think both of them have their merits. However, from a Montreal Canadiens point of view, they need a scoring. They, they, they need somebody who's able to put the puck in the net, and I think from that point of view, I think the Montreal Canadiens should draft Philip Zadina with the number three pick. But what I think that could do going forward... Um, is then you have Ottawa at number four, Arizona at number five, and Detroit at number six. Um, and I think all three of these teams are more in need of playmaking defensemen. I, I don't think... Um, and, and Ottawa, that's entirely on the basis that they don't find a way to get Eric Carlson extended. And if Ottawa makes a splash trade at the draft with... Eric Carlson moving out, then that further exasperates the need that they have for a playmaking defenseman. So that would, you know, move other players up on their board. And I think that that could really cause um, a downward spiral for Kachuk. Now, I think if Brady Kachuk is drafted in the number three spot with, with Montreal or if Montreal decides to to move back and, and acquire some more assets, then maybe somebody moves up to take Brady Kachuk, and then Philip Zadina is immediately the pick at number four because I think that Zadina as a prospect and understanding and knowing that he is coming in this year, and with Brady Kachuk, he hasn't fully committed to being part of the NHL next year. He doesn't know whether or not he's going to go back in and finish his collegiate um, obligation before coming to the NHL. Uh, for my money, I would, as a Penguins fan, I would 
I, I would be in my glory if either one of these players were available for the Penguins. Um, that is obviously not going to happen unless something magnificent happens, and obviously that would involve uh, a Phil Kessel or, or a Chris Letang or somebody of that caliber being moved. But going back to what I was saying, if, if, if Kachuk isn't fully committed to next year, then do you spend a top five draft pick on a guy that is probably not going to be on your NHL roster next year? And I can see teams shying away from that, um, which I think could also hurt Kachuk's draft value. Um, I think at worst, I don't think he slips down any further than number seven to Vancouver. I think Vancouver absolutely would love another another big um, playmaking forward. Um, obviously, they have two guys to replace in Daniel and Henrik Sedin, um, and that's a large portion of their points totals that have left the building. Now, I know they have uh, Bo Horvat and they have Brock Besser, um, who is going to be the the core, the nucleus of their team moving forward. You add another guy like Brady Kachuk to that roster, and then you have one of the most formidable lines for the next probably 10 years in, in, in the NHL. And I think that would be great for Vancouver. Um, I really think Arizona's probably looking defensemen, and I think Detroit is probably looking defensemen. And Ottawa is a wild card depending on the Eric Carlson situation. But any one of these teams could take a guy like Kachuk or Philip Zadina. Um, and like I said, Philip Zadina definitely, he doesn't, he's a guy that has such an immediate impact on your roster that you really have to have to take him if he's available. Excuse me. And, and I think Kachuk has the potential to make an immediate impact if during the interview process, as he's talking to these teams and he's assuring them that he is coming to the NHL next year. Um, and even at that still, I, I wouldn't put it past the team to want to get a year out of him in the in the AHL system to let him uh, develop a little bit more. Uh, both of these players could use a little bit more size. They're they're not fully matured in their in their muscular capacity yet. So I think um, to get used to the the training, the conditioning of uh, of the NHL and get fully matured from a physical standpoint, then that would help both of them immensely. But I think Philip Zadina is the most NHL ready of these two players. Um, and this is also of the, the premise that uh, Rasmus Dahlin is going number one to Buffalo and um, Andre uh, Zvechnikov will go number two to Carolina because those are two guys that are just... I, I think they have quite a margin between them and, and the rest of the prospect pool that you almost have to draft those guys in those positions because I think um, Dolan changes the landscape of your franchise for the foreseeable future, and I think Svechnikov adds a level of elite-level talent to your prospect pool immediately. And I think he's a guy that's NHL-ready. I think Zadina is more NHL-ready than Brady Kachuk, um, for my money. If, if, I, if I were to speculate as to which one I think was going to make the most immediate impact in the NHL. So that's my take on these two players. Um, and again, Montreal, they could pull a wild card move and trade out, and then that could change a lot of things. Um, some of these other teams in the like the Islanders for example with two picks at 11 and 12 could very easily package those two picks and go aggressively up uh, up the draft board to try and get into a position to draft one of these two players um, with the anticipation of John Tavares resigning and that adds you know another talented forward to their pool of already a pretty talented forward group, I would look for New York to be more in a position to go into the 
four, five, six range to try and get some of these highly touted defensive prospects as well. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Who do you got higher on your draft board? Do you do you think Kachuk comes off first? Do you think Zadina goes first? And what does it do to the rest of uh, the draft going forward after that pick? Um, be sure to like and subscribe if you're just passing through the channel. Um, and uh, follow me on all my social medias in the in the description below. And we will see you next time. Thanks.